But what I found out is that Dartfish is an unbelievable teaching tool for my young coaches. It allows me to take my coaches' eyes and put them behind my eyeballs and to see what I'm seeing and to understand what I'm trying to get them to see and, and understand on a, on a real-time basis. And so as a teaching tool for young coaches, uh, it, it's absolutely invaluable. This is a nice clip, and, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it is a, it's a speed athlete. We had some pressure when we brought him in for NFL Combine training this year. On the left is his pre, and on the right is about four weeks into training. And basically what we're working on is acceleration mechanics. Obviously, the start position is key for this athlete. But this is a fast athlete. He's a 4.5540 guy. He ran 4.44 for us at the NFL Combine this year. We have to say that part of that was we actually teaching the mechanics of speed. And I know you guys as track coaches know you can still do some of that. And you can see this first slide, the three big components that we're looking at here. The first one is the angle that you see measured at the top, the 34.7 versus the 41.1. That's his attack angle from his earlobe, through his shoulder, through his waist, uh, down through his hip, knee, and ankle. And that's the attack angle with the parallel to the ground. We know this from fast people. And studying fast people, we study a lot of track athletes. The deeper we can get that, closer to that approximating that 35 degree angle, the better off this athlete's going to be in his horizontal propulsive forces. And so that's a great improvement from already a pretty decent angle of 41 down to 34.7. That speaks to this athlete's ability to have a better start position. The other angle you see is the 102 versus 92. That's his hip separation. We also know from fast people that we study, the more hip separation we can get on this zero step, the better chance we have of horizontal displacement. And we also know that there's a key standard there for an athlete of his size that's over 100 degrees. And so that's basically an angle that's going through his hip joint on his right leg back through the femurs of both legs, and that's the angle you see of difference. And so all of a sudden we can draw in this athlete's in their ideology when they look at their first, their pre, to what they ideally want to be uh, when we're testing. And to gain 10 degrees of hip separation is critical. And what you can see there, the, the result of this is a hip displacement uh, at touchdown of 1.3 meters versus 1.19 meters. And so in effect, what we've done is we've created a more aggressive attack angle, uh, a more extreme disassociation of right hip, left hip, and the end result is a bigger uh, zero step of 1.3 meters. This is the X's and O's of executing an acceleration. And it's, it's attack angles, it's ground reaction forces, it's hip separation. These are techniques that until we draw this athlete's eyes into these things that he's doing, making him apparent or obvious to what it is that he can't do, it's hard for us to go back in and change. And certainly our drill work supports these things, but A, number one, the athlete has to know what they don't know. They have to be made aware of their insufficiencies, and that was the first step. And then when they come back and show them this pre-post, I can promise you Chris Gregg is on the take with, my, with our techniques after watching it, because what he's caring about is what's happening on that, that lower left corner there, where he's already shaving about a tenth of a second off his first ten yards. So it's a pretty striking video comparison left to right. You can see how he's collapsing a little bit when he strikes the ground. So I don't know this athlete. Again, I know that I know that their length of their pillar from the ground up to the top of their head is shrinking on ground contact. You can see it almost collapsing there. It's almost as if he's sitting down in a in a reclining chair. And I know we as coaches talk about that all the time. And he does a little bit more on one leg versus the other leg. And so these are all things that I'm not sure my real time eyes would pick up on. I wish the coaches that I grew up with over the last 20 years that I stood around and listened to you know, them talk about human movement had this iPad Express tool because there's so many times I wish I could crawl behind their eyes and really see what it is that they're seeing. And I think, I think that's the powerful piece of this tool now is I'm able to replicate some of my 20 years of experience in my young coaches. And at the end of the day, it helps my athletes. And really, that's what we're here, we're here talking about. We're not trying to help each other out for ourselves. We're helping our athletes out. And I think that's the great thing about this tool. These athletes are used to taking mental reps. I mean, that's something that the great ones, Michael, is, in, is included in that one, that something he always felt like he had an advantage was he, was he was mentally stronger than a lot of the athletes. And that's not just being tough or focused. A lot of what he talks about is him actually taking mental reps, where he would actually run movies in his head doing things the right way. And I tell you what, a lot of our great athletes, what we're finding out is they do that very same thing, that they like to take mental reps. And we try to do the same thing when it comes to some of these basic athletic elements. It's something as simple as a stride like this, being able to run the right loop in your mind, uh, capturing that loop, showing the corrections that have been made. That's a, it's a huge, powerful thing for these athletes to, to do, uh, not just the real-time correction of, of technique and uh, making them aware of something, but giving them the tools, I guess, mentally now that they can run some of those video loops in their head of Darfish TV. So it's a powerful, powerful tool to replicate yourself outside the, the, the sticks and bricks of where you operate day to day. I'm going to take over the screen and I'm just going to reiterate what you've seen here. I'm talking about the, the different components 
from the complex studies that you can do with the Dartfish software and the easy quick feedback that you do with Express and the multiple tools that you can have in the software itself including the Stromotion like you've seen in broadcasting and then the ability to quickly capture and annotate live feedback giving that visual picture and just in a nutshell of what we explained here and as as Lance discussed, now you have an online connection to them.